Hi, I'm Marcy and I'm a part-time reseller on the Poshmark Canada app and today I'm here to share with you all the mistakes I made in my first year of reselling. So before we start, I do want to get into my reselling journey. I started selling on Poshmark in December of 2019 and at first it was just a really fun hobby. My first sale was a bundle sale and of course I was instantly hooked. I started going thrifting and thrifting and thrifting and I wasn't paying attention to how much I was buying. There was a lot of money going out, but there wasn't a lot of money going in. And as well, I was buying supplies to get started. And today I'm going to be going over the supplies I bought within the first month of me reselling, as well as how much I spent each month and whether or not I was profitable. What I really want from this video, I mainly did this video for myself because I haven't looked at the numbers. Um, in the last year, I didn't look at my monthly numbers and that was the main mistake I made. I wasn't keeping track of how much was going out and how much was going in. So if you're thinking about reselling, make sure that you are paying attention to your numbers and how much you're spending. And I'm just a teacher, so I'm not an accountant or a mathematician, so just take my information with a grain of salt. This is me reflecting on my business decisions of 2020, and I hope it'll help someone out. If I knew what I know now, I definitely would have approached reselling differently. So whenever I first started reselling, I definitely first uh, thought of it as a hobby. And I got started in January, so I was going to thrift stores, I was working, I was kind of really doing it part-time. And then of course, when March hit and everything shut down, it was, it was still a hobby. I wasn't going thrifting in a month. Um, that everything was shut down, but I was sourcing online and I was spending a lot and I wasn't thinking about it smartly. That is what we are going to go over. I think I really started um, thinking about reselling as a business in June because that is when I bought QuickBooks. I'm not sponsored. I'm just sharing the products that I use for my reselling business. Of course, you need to um, talk with an accountant or your local CPA. I don't give advice like that. I'm just telling you about my personal experience. So I got QuickBooks. And even though I was inputting the data, so in June, I inputted the data from January to June. I inputted it. I saw it. But I didn't really, I didn't really dive into it. I didn't analyze it. And in this coming year, I really need to look to the data and be analytical about my business. Just because I really love data, but I don't like compiling it. And it's really easy to put it off, but if you're starting, keeping track in one way or another, even if it's just a hobby, is really important. So first I'm going to talk about um, the tools that I find really important. So the tools that I bought at the very beginning and whether I should have bought them or I shouldn't have. I have my iPad here, so if I'm looking down at the screen, I'm just looking at my notes and the numbers. So the first tool that I found really important to my reselling business is a steamer. So I had the steamer, I got it as a graduation present. So I didn't have to pay any cost for the steamer. But what I would recommend do is um, thrifting one. I did manage to thrift two steamers this year because every time I see a steamer, I want to try it out, which is weird because steaming is my absolute least favorite part of reselling. I hate steaming, but I love buying steamers. <laughs> That's part of my problem. So I got two handheld steamers. I think I should try them out, give them a try, and see how they compare to my Conair steamer in another video. But I would recommend getting a steamer. Would I recommend paying full price? No. During the first year, you want to keep your costs low, and that is something I didn't think about. So the second tool is organizing all your little reselling things that you need day to day. So what I really enjoy is my fabric softener, my Doc Martin Wonder Balsam, that really makes leather shoes clean up nice. It was $20, but it goes a long way, and I can use it on my personal shoes as well. So a tape measurement. I do use measurements. I know that's a controversial subject. So when I first started, I actually took a picture of the photo with the measuring tape, and then I moved to just writing the measurements um, in the listing and now I have the whiteboard where I write the measurements and I add them to the listing. And whenever I'm listing, I really want to become more efficient. I don't want to be moving across the room. I just kind of want to be pivoting from steaming to listing to inventory to cleaning. 
So I definitely want to have a system in place and that current allows it. I don't have to move very much while I'm listing. Therefore, it makes me more efficient in my time. And you don't have to have anything fancy. I started out with a plastic container from the dollar store. And then by the end of 2020, my wonderful Aunt Gina gifted me with kind of like a trolley cart where I put all my supplies. So thank you, Gina. I really appreciate it. Okay, so getting into the supplies that I bought in my first month of reselling. So I'm going to be going over my Amazon transactions in the month of January. Um, the bulk of my tools that I got from for reselling has been from Amazon. So first up was this folding clothes board. One of the main things I hated to do was folding clothes and I really wanted to, to make my clothes look presentable. I did use this at the very beginning, have I used it since the first month? No. So I would recommend this if you hate folding clothes. It definitely isn't necessary and it cost me $18.49. So that is a buy that I wish I hadn't purchased and I would have put more thought into because $18.50 or I can just fold it myself. But it is pretty sleek. Next up is these 12 by 15 apparel bags. Now I really do recommend these because I really do like putting my inventory in bags while I store them. It keeps them fresh, it keeps them um, folded and put together and all organized. It really helps towards not missing items. So I bought a hundred of these. I bought these for $16.91, so it came out to 17 cents a bag. So I do highly recommend those bags. In 2021, I do, that's my cat. In 2021, I do want to be more uh, environmentally friendly and start re reusing those plastic bags and that will cut down on cost as well so i also bought some poly mailers 15 by 25 that is a great size i do really like poly mailers just because i am from canada and canada post doesn't supply free um shipping supplies i know in the u.s usps does have free shipping supplies but in canada you have to be resourceful i recommend having a few on hand but if you want to be more cost efficient, I really recommend just using boxes, recycling Amazon boxes, asking friends and family, hey, do you have any leftover boxes that I can use for my reselling business, especially after Christmas? So I bought that 100 pack of poly mailers, that 15 by 25, and it cost me $17.99. So again, about 18 cents. So about 18 cents per bag, and I have to think about that when I'm shipping it out. So next up, on January 19th, I purchased 10 by 13 um, clear cellophane bags. And these were 10 by 13 inches. Now this size bag I would use for shirts and small items. Whenever you put jeans and sweaters, they can burst. But And this one is resealable. So at the time when I got these, I thought they were the best thing. And I did get a lot of feedback, love posh notes, whenever I sent items out in them because it looked professional but 2021 I do want to be more cost efficient and, and environmentally friendly so I can't reuse these as well because it has that sticky so I am going to be sending out my inventory and I won't be repurchasing those they were great if you this is a personal choice if you want to have um clear crisp bags that reseal and look really professional I definitely recommend buying these and I bought these in bulk so I bought a thousand of them and it cost me $83.49 and it came to about it was about less than a penny um, a bag so it is really cost efficient okay so next up on January 19th I ordered thank you stickers and I do recommend buying these they really help me out they help me save time because I don't write thank you notes in my packages. So next is my biggest purchase of the year, my biggest investment, and that is my thermal printer. So I did a lot of research and I decided that I was going to get a full memo from Amazon. It was $1.99 and I believe I got a small discount on it. And I did research Rolo and Dymo. Since I was beginning, I decided I would go ahead and get the full memo and I'm really enjoying my purchase. I was spending a lot of money on ink before I got my label printer and I really wouldn't go back. A thermal label printer is really important if you are thinking about taking your reselling more seriously. So I'm really glad I got that. has been the best investment money-wise because I was spending so much money on ink. And the full memo is fine. Is it the best quality? No. 
I would probably I would probably go with a Dymo or Rolo next time, do a little bit more research, and then try and find a good quality one secondhand. And I also really want to support other resellers, eBay sellers. So definitely try and get one secondhand. So I bought the Amazon basic labels and they cost me $17.28. So definitely cost effective. And that is everything I bought in my very first month of reselling for hobby. So now let's look into my numbers. So from January 1st to January 31st, let's see what Poshmark paid me. What is my net earning after Posh fee, after shipping discounts? How much did I make on Poshmark? So in January, I made $259.00. In 60 cents so that's how much um my net profit I sold on Poshmark my first month my expenses was $1,100 so I did a lot of sourcing and I did a lot of investing in tools for my reselling business so my net income was minus $795 now did I know that at the time absolutely not that is why I wish I was keeping track more closely of how much I was spending and how much I was earning. So that so I bought QuickBooks in June. I believe it was June seventh. So I really wish I would have, in any capacity, wrote down my numbers from the very beginning and then keeping track of what I was doing and being accountable for it. This year in 2021, I really want to be accountable for what I'm buying, what I'm selling, and what I'm earning. Definitely because I don't come from an accounting, business, entrepreneurship background. It is more difficult for me to understand this side of the business. So I really need to make sure that I am focused on breaking down my numbers each and every month. And I think I'm going to be doing that in the form of what sold videos. So look forward to that soon. So January 1st to January 31st. Um, I lost $795. Now, it was an investment. I did get a lot of great tools to pivot me and help me grow in the future and to build my business, but I definitely didn't realize that at the time. So now looking at February, so February 1st to February 29th, um, after Posh fees and shipping discounts, my net income from Poshmark was $235.70. My expenses from sourcing was $290.10. So I guess I had a more slim, thrifty month. That kind of makes sense. I am a substitute teacher, so I go around um, to schools. I think I have about six schools that I work casually at and I get pretty busy. I am from Prince Edward Island, Canada, and we have a teacher shortage. So I definitely probably worked full time in February and that is why I only um, managed to go thrifting a little bit. I mean, that's the only explanation I have because I love thrifting and it's hard to believe that I went from 1,100 in expenses to $290.10. So my net income from February after um, subtracting those expenses is minus $54. So now let's look at March, whenever the world kind of shut down. So my income was $378. So that's really good considering it was March and I was still um, reselling on a hobby basis. And my expenses was $426.50. And you may ask, how are my expenses higher this month when the world was basically shut down? And that's because I did a lot of sourcing online. I sourced on an online Facebook auction group and I found many great things from that group but I also really started to buy things that I really shouldn't definitely when I first started out reselling I just caught it when I first started out reselling I wanted to buy everything I'm like only oh, this is a dollar someone has to buy it but in reality I should have been being very selective and careful with my money and really only purchasing pieces that would sell or sell quickly and I and not necessarily cheap. This year I want to make sure I'm picking up desirable items and items that I know that will sell and will sell for a higher um, return on investment. So that's something I am going to be focusing on. So my income in March, $378.40. Expenses, $426.50. So my net income was minus $48. Now let's look into April. So my income was $663.30 and that's um, my net earnings from Poshmark. My expenses was $134.80. 
So again, the world was shut down. I wasn't going out thrifting and sourcing, and that little bit came from online. So then my net income was $528. So that's great. That is a great um, supplemental income um, for me and a great progress. So I went from a significant loss to gradually um, going up and being profitable. So, so far I'm really happy with my progress. Now on to May, so from May 1st to May 31st, I made $549.20 on Poshmark, and my expenses was $640.20, and you know what happened in May? All the stores started open and I went thrifting. So after that, my net income is $91. All right, going into June, so June 1st to June 30th, and I do want to preface this time that I did take a summer job working at a restaurant. So I had, so I was less busy. So I had less hours I could thrift and put towards Poshmark. So my income was $841.70. I think that's one of my highest Poshmark, I think that's one of my highest Poshmark um, net earning months to date. So I'm really happy about that, showing that growth. My expenses was $408.90. So again, I went out thrifting. I was sourcing. I was living it up. And my net income was $433. So that is really great supplemental income for June. Now moving on to July, July 1st to July 31st. And again, I was working. So my income was $335 off of Poshmark. That was my net earnings. And my expenses was $827.50. I do not know, I do not know what I got up to in July, but $827.50, that is a big leap. And I had no idea. I was thinking I could do this as a part-time reseller. I could actually make money. Little did I know, my net income was minus $493. Why oh why? I had QuickBooks at this point, but I wasn't looking at the data. Why was I not looking at the data? So in my first year of reselling, from January to July, I lost $565.10. And I didn't even know it. At that time, I was thrifting. I was selling on Poshmark. I was having a great old time. And I was thinking, I could make this at my little side hustle. But I wasn't looking at the numbers, and little did I know, I was down $565.10. This year, Mercy, you are keeping track of your numbers. You're not a mathematician. I like to say, I, well, I am a teacher, I'm not a math teacher. But this, I need to put my math teacher hat on for this. Because $565, I was down that much, and I didn't even realize it. Definitely need to keep track of my numbers. New Year's resolution. So I wanted to divide the year up from January to July just because I bought all my tools for reselling in January. And the next time I purchased something for my reselling business uh, tool wise was in July. So I gave you the first half of the year and I showed you the supplies I bought for my reselling business. And now I'm going to show you the second half of the year, the supplies I bought and my net earnings as well as my final net income for the year. Okay, so let's pick back up in July because that is when I purchased an item off of Amazon and I purchased this clothing rack and this actually holds up to 400 pounds and I am obsessed with it. I am completely happy with my purchase. It holds all my coats and sweaters. I love selling coats and sweaters. It's sturdy. It doesn't break. It doesn't move. It has wheels so you can move it around, put it there, put it here and then it helps you really be functional. So this was really good and it was cost effective for the quality of it. And it was $84.87. Definitely wouldn't regret it. I'm thinking of looking for a smaller one from that brand for my room, or I may just buy another one of those because they are great. They'd be perfect if you want to keep your inventory hanging up opposed to packed in bins or bags. Definitely recommend this clothing rack. It's really nice and sturdy. And for can Canadian prices and Amazon, it really was the best bang for your buck. Okay, so then the next thing I purchased on Amazon was from August 21st, and it was hangers. And I again, I really like this purchase just because I was picking up hangers at the thrift store, and I was paying like, and I was paying like a dollar for three or four. 
But these ones are really quality. They look nice in the pictures. They're all uniform. So I really do like these non-slip velvet hangers. And I spent $29.99 on them. So $30. And let me just see what I actually paid. So I got 50 hangers, so that comes out to 60 cents per hanger. And those hangers I will reuse and reuse. I love them. I stole a couple from my personal closet, but they are my favorite. Going from August to September, the next thing I purchased on Amazon for my reselling business was these thank you stickers. I really enjoy thank you stickers. And I just wanted to have more of a neutral, professional sticker. So that's why I bought these. Do you need to buy these? No. Especially when I have another roll of stickers, but... Who doesn't like stickers? I know I do. So those are super cute. I love the gold. And I thought they'd be really cute for the upcoming holiday season. Totally unnecessary, but I bought them. So next, on September 13th, I bought these clothes hangers for pants. They were trash. They were cheap. I got 10 for um, $15. So that's about $1.50 a hanger. Worst $15 I spent. So the next thing I bought was this shoe rack, and I absolutely recommend it, even for your personal home to hold your own shoes. It's sturdy, it holds 50 pairs, and it's one of my best investments of the year. It doesn't take up too much space, and it's sturdy. Absolutely love it. 10 out of 10. And I spent $41.99 on it. You can't beat that. That was a really good value. So next up in November, I bought these poly mailers. I must have been running out of my smaller ones. And I bought these blue thank you ones. I think this was a Black Friday deal, and I got them for $21.68. Well, that is a good deal, but I did get some plain ones for $13.19. So definitely, I did not need to get uh, that novelty print. That was an extra expense, but do I regret it? I just love them too much. So that $10 was more of a impulse buy but I really like it but you do not need it again recycle boxes whenever you can I do want to look into um finding biodegradable poly mailers just because I in my space I can't hold too many boxes I can't store them and I really want to be shipping in environmentally friendly packaging so if you have a company please comment down below where you get environmentally friendly packaging biodegradable that would be great. So on November 27th, I bought my reselling planner listing book. And I love this book. I just mainly use it for my goals, my listing goals especially, because I wasn't keeping track from all this information, from all the data I showed you. One thing is evident. I wasn't keeping track. I wasn't treating um, what I was spending and what I was earning as a business. And I was totally off track. My perception of events was altered. But this planner is help helping me get back on track. Hopefully I keep writing and using my journal because I have a tendency of getting really good and then just stopping. So I really want to be consistent with my journaling, keeping track of my listings and my goals because that's the only way you can, can grow. And I really want to grow in 2021. I don't want to have a month where I'm gouging money. I really want to be smart. I never thought of myself as owning a business or operating a business and earning money. But I'm here to learn and I'm living for it. So love that journal. Next was this Conair um, defuzzer. Conair was great. It was $11.95. Great sound investment. It's meant to clean up sweaters and Lululemon pants. So $11.95. It's powerful. It's battery operated. Win-win. Love it. Okay. So that's all the supplies I bought off Amazon for my reselling business this year. Of course, I did make small purchases outside of that, like Doc Martin Wonder Balsam, my suede brush, my suede cleaner, my fabric softener. But I really made most of my purchases. But I really made most of my purchases on Amazon. So now that you could see the stuff that I bought, let's look at the second half of my numbers of 2020 starting at August. But when we are looking at my numbers for August, just keep in mind I have had QuickBooks at this point and I was inputting my data. Not weekly, but probably two times a month. So my income, so my net sales on Poshmark was $616.50. My expenses was was $397.60. Of course, love thrifting. So my net income was $219. I really like that. I was working at the time, so an extra $200. Perfect. Now September. Now September, I actually 
put my closet on hold. So $235 in net profit from Poshmark. And my expenses were what and my expenses was five hundred and sixty four dollars and fifty cents. So that means my net income was three hundred and twenty nine dollars. Again, thrifting got the best of me and I wasn't keeping track of my numbers. Now to October, my best sales month of the year. In October, that's when I thought, okay, this is this isn't a hobby. This is a part time reselling gig. I can do this. I know I signed up for QuickBooks in June. But that was more trying to figure out my hobby income for my income taxes. But once October hit, I thought, okay, I really can be a part-time reseller. This is fun. I really enjoy doing this. I love sourcing. I love thrifting. I love every aspect of reselling except for steaming. But October and October's numbers is really when I thought I can be a part-time reseller and I can have fun doing it and I can make money. So my income was $1,000. $400. So that was my net income off of Poshmark. My expenses, my thrifting cost was $236.30. So then my net income was $1,153 for October. And I couldn't be happier with that number as a part-time reseller. October, love you. Okay, so in November, so from November 1st to November 30th, my net profit from Poshmark was $778.10. My expenses was $371.90. So that means my net income was $406. And I, and I am okay with that number. On the last part of November, I wasn't going out because things were starting to shut down in my area and I was working more. So I am happy with $406. I think any month where I'm making a profit and not losing money, I'm happy with. So moving on to December 1st to December 31st, my net income, so my net earnings from Poshmark were $731.80. My expenses was $248. And my net income before taxes was $484. I am happy with that, especially with the amount of work I put into Poshmark in December. I did really good in, I did really good the first week. I think I had like 83 listings in the first week and then it kind of died off. But $484 of net income I'm happy with. So now let's look at my year in review. What did my year look like from start to finish as a hobby reseller turning into a part-time reseller on Poshmark Canada? So from January 1st to December 31st, my net income, so the amount that Poshmark paid me after fees was $7,000 and my expenses was $5,600. And my net income was 1413 And I'm happy with that. Did I think as I was going along, did I think I was making more? Yes. But what I really take away is that I need to be keeping track of my numbers. I need to be thoughtful about what I'm picking up and not wasteful and not overbuy. Because looking at my expenses, I spent $5,600 on inventory and supplies. So when I really should have been selling things from my own closet, asking friends and family if they had any extra clothes, especially during during quarantine, if they were donating clothes, if I could have it, maybe posting on social media and saying, hey, I'm a reseller, would you mind donating clothes to me and I'll resell them online. Definitely in 2021, I'm going to be looking more at my expenses and how much I am spending on inventory. I know everyone loves thrifting, I love thrifting, but I really need that balance of thrifting and finding inventory as well as asking friends and family for inventory as well. I also need to focus on being consistent, so listing, really trying to build my business now that I am in a reseller mindset, and also learning from my mistakes. Do I need the pretty stickers? No. Do I want them? Yes, but I, do I need them? No. By looking at my numbers, I could see gradual growth, and that is what I'm happy with. I transitioned from hobby reselling to part-time reselling, and my numbers went from negative to positive, and they kept on building. So in 2021, I really want to keep on building. I don't want to be too hard on myself. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope that this video showed you my mistakes and kind of what not to do because I did make a lot of mistakes. And that's okay. I've never thought about owning a business before and I kind of just tackled it running. Do I think it's the right way to start reselling? No, but it's my way. 
and I'm definitely going to be reflecting on the choices I've made and building on them. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again. Here's to a better 2021. Bye.